multi-generational mixed race people are the Rihannas of the mixed race. If you are biracial and we procreate and we have children who have children with other biracial and multiracial people, so on and so forth, then that would be a multi-generational mixed race bloodline. We've seen these mixed race bloodlines established with Dominicans and Puerto Ricans. These are multiracial people. These are the mixed race people. Me being first generation biracial is like me being the fucking Gabby Hanna of the mixed race. Anyway, you're asking me about their racial mixtures. They're either multiracial or multi-interracial, which is what you described. Your mom is African and European and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So she would be multi-interracial and you would be multi-interracial. Multi-interracial is part of the mixed race, whereas interracial is not. Somebody who is interracial will have a DNA chart that looks like 90%. I don't like percentages, but it'll be like, I'm 98% this and 2% that. (laughs) That 2% is an admixture making you interracial. Are mixed black people light-skinned? As a person who studies race and racial classification, this kind of discourse on TikTok has been really interesting to follow, particularly because of the generational locus of multiraciality. The generational locus of multiraciality is a sociological term used to describe why people who might technically be multiracial may not identify as multiracial or may not be identified as multiracial. I'll give you some examples. We've got me, Zoe Kravitz, and Cory Booker. The way that I might describe these people, the way that these people describe themselves, and the way that you might describe these people may not all be the same. Race and the language we use to describe it is not fixed. It is flexible because race is a social construct and the boundaries around it and the language around it changes. I would describe all three of these people as black, all three of these people as light-skinned, but I might not describe all three of these people as multiracial because of their generational locus of multiraciality. My generational locus of multiraciality is one generation in that my parents are of two different racial groups. In a video I made this week that this person is commenting on, I described myself as black, biracial, and light-skinned. I would also describe Zoe Kravitz as black and light-skinned. I wasn't able to find a very recent example of how Zoe Kravitz identifies herself, but in a 2017 article, she identified herself as mixed and said that she was getting more comfortable with identifying as black. Zoe Kravitz's generational locus of multiraciality is two generations in that both of her parents are black. They're both also multiracial. So Zoe has two non-black grandparents and two black grandparents. Next is Senator Cory Booker. I would describe Cory Booker as black, I would describe Cory Booker as light skin, but I would not describe Cory Booker as being multiracial or biracial, even though technically he would be. Because Senator Booker's generational locus of multiraciality is three or more generations away. Senator Booker has two black parents, four black grandparents, but he does not have eight black great grandparents. Cory Booker, like many other light skinned black people, has non black ancestry. Sometimes that is a result of a chosen interracial union, and sometimes, particularly during enslavement, that was a result of a not chosen interracial assault. So do light skins have to have two black parents? I personally don't use light skin as a noun, so I would use light skinned to describe a multiracial person who has light skin. And plenty of multiracial black people are not light skinned, and plenty of multiracial black people are not mixed with white. If I'm specifying skin tone, I would use light skin to describe any light skinned black person, regardless of their generational locus. What's up you guys? I hope all is well. So in this video, I will be reading from a Reddit post and giving my commentary in response to it. And this post was made in a mixed race group and the post is discussing the experience of being a person who is multi-generationally mixed. So I thought that the article, or I'm sorry, the post was very interesting and there are a lot of interesting discussions that can come from um, some of the stuff that they mentioned. And it's a very interesting topic because the whole debate whether people are light-skinned black people or mixed or if that's, you know, an antiquated term or whatever, It's not really so much of a debate, but it is starting to be a discussion more so now. Um, 
with all of you know the stuff that's going on on social media and things regarding this conversation so first i have to get into the conversation too and you know give my two cents on it so let's get into it the reddit post that i will be reading from was posted in a group called mixed race and i will have that group linked in the comments in the description box below excuse me um and this is actually like a forum that i found that's been out for a while is that it was created in 2008 so it's actually been there for a while so i thought that that was really interesting because it's rare that you find mixed race groups online that are still um active through <laughs> for a long time like a lot of the time when i find mixed groups on like facebook or even on instagram um a lot of the times like either they haven't been active in months or they were just active for a little bit and then they left um or a lot of them get taken down too so i think that that should be noted but yeah i really like this reddit community like it's really diverse it's not just made up of people who are just mixed with black different types of mixtures it's really interesting and one thing i really like about that in particularly is that it shows you how similar the experiences are even when the person is not within the black community a lot of the mixed people be dealing with a lot of the similar stuff that mixed and light skinned people have to deal with um, in, in the black community. So I think that's important to point out because oftentimes I think we, I know for a fact that people within the black community, we believe that stuff is only, you know, that only happens in the black community and certain things are only a phenomenon that happen amongst black people and that's just not true like even when i talk to my friends that's um asian and from other poc communities like they be having the same type of experiences that um you know we do and i've said multiple times that latinos have a lot of the same type of issues and experiences um as african americans do and same thing with west indians west indians and africans be on the same type of you know it's t bullshit basically and same type of stuff as african americans and latinos honestly and that's from personal experience and observation and from personal first-hand accounts that i have gotten from other women <laughs> okay so i'm not capping so the title of the reddit post that i will be reading from is i wish i was 50 50 or just not mixed at all instead of having two mixed parents so she says i had a friend whose mother is puerto rican and the father is black american i went to visit her family and her cousin black american asked me what are you i hate this question because i'm not from a white mom black dad or vice versa i say well my mom's mother is just black her father was hispanic white and black his mother was half german and black and his father was irish and hispanic and my father's maternal grandmother was irish her grandparents are actually from ireland and a quarter black she has a white irish father and a biracial mother and my dad had a white paternal grandmother and this is why i decided to go over this reddit post because this post this poster actually has a very similar genetic makeup to me it sounds like um different european countries but generally a very similar like genetic mix um if we were to go by just percentages um so yeah both of my parents basically are mixed generationally but they also have family from different countries so i have family who are african-american as well as family from the caribbean and latin america so i basically like all my family's from the americas but they're mixed people and black people within that group so i kind of feel where she's coming from um and yeah i i definitely feel where she's coming from um i haven't felt like that to where i wish i was just 50 50 or not mixed at all i actually like being mixed the way i'm mixed i think it's different and unique <laughs> and there's also a very rich history there like those of us who have like um generations of mixing like going back like very far like you know that's very 
you know interesting to me and like yeah you know people always want to focus on like the negatives like with colonialization and you know the negative and the sad history about stuff and I understand that we do have to acknowledge the real history but at the same time as you know mixed people and as black people just in general because our cultures here in America are a mixture of the African the European and the indigenous peoples in the regions that we're from that is just a fact all of our cultures whether you be African American Latino or West Indian your culture is a mixture of cultures it just is what it is and so I do think that we have to come to terms with being okay with being mixed people and okay and proud of you know how far we have come and what we have built and grown culturally in this region I think that we've developed like really beautiful cultures with rich histories and that's very influential around the world and we should be proud of that and um I think we should stop looking at mixedness with so much doom and gloom um especially those of us who are you know mixed gener intergenerationally because it takes a lot of perseverance perseverance to you know keep moving forward through all of that and to continue to grow and create more and to continue to you know be prosperous and you know thrive and so I think that that's something to be proud of so uh, that's just a food for the thought like I know it can be really difficult to be just a mixed person in general whether you be biracial or you know mixed down the line or you know predominantly African but just light-skinned I know it can be really difficult but try to think about the things that are there to be proud of and the perseverance that our ancestors had and you know like how you know that is you know that that's it is it's crazy that we were the new creation of people that are here and you know it's up to us just to move forward and to do better and you know to take and learn from the past and to just you know grow from that and educate ourselves from that but it's we don't always have to look at it as doom and gloom or be frustrated and I think that there are a lot of struggles that come from being biracial that people who are intergenerationally mixed do not have to deal with and there are a lot of positive things that come from being intergenerationally mixed and having that experience so they go on to say he then said so you're just black then I said, yeah, sure, because I only grew up on black culture. My mom didn't really know her dad and my white grand great grands died before I was born. Despite that, I know technically I am mixed. It just seems like it doesn't count mainly because the non-black biracial grandparents were white. I feel like if they were non-black people of color, I would feel more mixed. I don't know if... It's because I live in America and the one drop rule is part of our history here. My white great grands were from a different country, so I don't know why they didn't pass down their traditions. Anyways, I took a DNA test and I'm between 58 and 62% African, 35 through 37% white, and the rest native. Yeah, I've never taken a DNA test. Like, just based on the way we look, I do think that I'm somewhere in that 65 to 70% range. Or like this person, they said they're 62. Yeah, probably like 62 to 70% range. Um, I think I'm probably 65 to 75% African maybe. But then again, you know, you never know. But I've looked at like DNA test videos of people who look similar to me and they tend to be about 60, 65% African um, and then like the rest European and indigenous. And I do believe that like probably I'm, I know for a fact I'm more European than um, like Taino I have seminal roots as well. So like not gonna like put too much stock into the DNA test or like stress myself out about it. If I, if I get into an opportunity where I get to take one, I will. But I'm also like, you know, I'm kind of iffy about them as well because they're not that great for people of African descent and for people of color. So I also don't want like us to start putting too much stock into the DNA test as well because they're not really like catered to our genetics and for us. And you know, you have to keep that in mind too. But like at the end of the day, <laughs> the only for sure thing I know I mix with is European. So, you know, there's that. It is what it is. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, and I'm not like ashamed of that or anything. Like, you know, those of us that are a mixture of African, you know, Europeans, the like mulatto type mix, like there's a very strong history in this country and around the world. So, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of to, to be that mix. And mulatto people have actually accomplished and contributed a lot in history. Like a lot of first a lot of first black people have been either biracial or been from a african and european lineage like oh you know there have been a lot of firsts i definitely understand what this person is saying that yeah i understand that i am a black person and in america because i'm predominantly african and because of the way i present i am a black person i'm proud to be a black person there's no if ends or curls about that, I'm proud to be a black woman. I'm proud to be proud of the history. I'm proud to be a woman of African descent. I'm proud of all that, but I'm proud to be mixed as well. I'm not ashamed of that part of me either, because I know that it is a part of me. Um, I know for a fact that you know I have that blood in me. I can't deny it based on how I look. <laughs> that would be just ignorant to do that and just honestly self-hating to do that. So it's like I don't. So I get what this person is saying, and so I get that like having to you know in the world you knowing you knowing that you're a black person but you knowing that you're mixed too and it's like I hope people like start to understand that when people like us say oh we're black or you know when we say that we're black and we know how we look you know subconsciously most of us we know that we are a mixed person we know that we have that in us even if we're not coming that to bring that to the forefront but the reality is also that in America a lot of the times but for up until recently being mixed meant being biracial and we're not biracial we're a different type of mix and because people don't have the they just don't have the range for the discussion about intergenerational mixedness <laughs> because they don't have a concept of that and they don't have the range for that discussion we don't feel like explaining it so we're just like yeah we're black and i don't think we have a problem with that but it's very irritating when you know that that's the case and most people are aware that they don't know anything about being an intergenerationally mixed person um they know that they don't know that but then they'll still come to you and be like well why don't you just say that you're mixed well why are you saying that you're black when you know you're mixed da, 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 da. girl you know why i'm saying i'm black like <laughs> you know why i'm not saying that i'm mixed because that's going to be confusing because if i say i'm mixed you're going to assume i'm biracial so and I, that's one thing that irritates me about these discussions currently online too. It's like, stop saying that African Americans did not acknowledge people as biracial. That is not true. Most of the time when somebody would say, oh, I'm mixed, we would just think, oh, they're biracial. And that's what they would say. They're just mixed. And then if you're light skinned and you're black, you're just considered light skinned and black. Nobody's thinking that you're 100%, 99.85.999% sub Saharan African. Like, nobody's saying that. They're not saying that. They're simply saying, oh, you're a part of the african diaspora but you're light-skinned because you probably got a little bit of some more of something going on more than the rest of us but you're not biracial you didn't grow up in the household with a non-black parent because that makes a huge difference nobody talks about that like being socialized by two mixed people and in a family of mixed people and brown skin and light skin people such as i was being socialized in that type of environment is very different than somebody who has a black parent and a white parent and they have a white side of their family and they have a african-american side of their family or they have a african side of their family you know like it's more polar opposite so it's like it's very different but in the world we are still having a similar experience in the world especially because we look alike a lot of the times because we're all mixed with african so it makes sense that biracials and light skins we all get mixed up for each other we just have a different experience in the home but in the world we have almost usually the same experiences a lot of the time um you know yeah we have a lot of the similar experiences but i will say that when people are aware of your type of mix that can make you a target in different types of ways because i do know for a fact that it's easier for an intergenerationally mixed person to be accepted in the black community than a biracial parent i'm, I'm sorry than a biracial person because for some reason being half white and having a whole white parent just really triggers <laughs> some people I, I don't know but for some reason it really bothers some people but when you're just you got two mixed parents or you have a mixed parent and a black parent it's just kind of you know you it's easier for you to 
yeah, yeah, you're you're more like everybody else. So yeah, you're mixed, and you might have to do with little sly comments here and there, but it's not as extreme and it's not as obvious, and you're not gonna get the same hostility as somebody who is has a whole white parent. So I do acknowledge that, but it does come with its own set of challenges. Then they uh in the reddit post off by saying i'm gonna start from where i left off before it says anyways i took a dna test and i'm between 58 to 62 percent african and 35 to 37 percent white and the rest native not that it matters but i was just curious to see since i never met my white family members i'm just rambling now i just wanted to get this off my chest i feel alone sometimes because i never met anyone who was mixed the way i am or maybe Maybe I have but they only told me they were just black I feel guilty or ashamed when someone asks if I mixed or if I mix with anything other than black and I say yes since they died before I existed also some people feel if you say something other than black it's because you are ashamed of being black it's confusing what are your thoughts yeah, I really feel for this person because being intergenerationally mixed is definitely a mindfuck, man. Like, <laughs> you will definitely find your share of shenanigans and be up staring at the steel ceiling at night sometimes trying to figure out these people's logic because it, it will drive somebody to drink if you don't have the proper tools and, you know, wherewithal to help your own self. But, yeah, I feel for this person. But yeah, that's why I do these videos because I know how like that can feel and how like confusing stuff can be, especially when you're seeing all of this going on online and you know, it's really confusing, especially if you've never really encountered that in your outside life and then all of a sudden you're seeing all of these narratives and all these people like saying all this confusing stuff. And I want to discuss the gaslighting and mind games that they spoke about at the end of their paragraph that I definitely have spoken about in other videos and discussed on this channel before and it's it's really psychologically abusive and emotionally exhausting for mixed race people to have to do with you know the mind games and the contradictory narratives and you know that can sound dramatic to people but I, I really don't care because it is what it is and you know it is something I'm passionate about and I am speaking from a place of like experience and it, it's just it, it's irritating and what they're saying is absolutely right that's what I was talking about earlier like being mixed is not a thing in this country and I and I want to connect this to the fact that in the Reddit um, post, the writer says that the friend's cousin um, asked her, what are you? And then after sh they told, I don't know, we don't know the gender, but I, I, you, anyway, <laughs> um, they told the cousin, oh, I'm mixed with X, Y, Z. And then the cousin proceeds to say, oh, so you're basically just black. And it's like, <laughs> if that's how you feel, why did you take the time to ask me what I am? Like, <laughs> it's funny to think about, but it's like, you really got to laugh to keep from crying. Like, <laughs> And then this is the other thing that I've just never understood because I've been in situations like this as well. And then people like they'll try to say it like they are catching you in the act of something like, oh, well, you're black. And it's like, OK, I wasn't denying that. <laughs> like, I didn't know I have to run around like saying I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all. Like, I think it's pretty clear. <laughs> like if you've seen a picture of me like it's, it's pretty clear I'm not ambiguous it, I live in New York City like ain't nobody running around questioning me it's not that many options you know like <laughs> come on now I actually look like exactly what I am so there's shouldn't really be any conversations or discussions but I think that I, I don't know like and I hate to say like it's a humbling tactic like as if like any old person who makes thinks that they're like um all that or something because that's the stereotype but I think that people think that when we like say what we are that we're saying it with trying to be better or um I don't know trying to sound exotic and there are some people who do do that don't get me wrong in discussions like if you really just saw her as just black you wouldn't have asked what are you how many other monoracial black people who look like the majority of the black community get asked what are you now they may ask where are you from are you american are you caribbean you know they might ask that 
but what are you that's really something that makes people get asked primarily i don't hear about a lot of like monoracial black people getting asked what are they so let's be real he asked her that because of that and that's just what kind what's kind of annoying about it it's like you you're asked to volunteer you're asked to tell people what you are but then when you say what you are people get annoyed and act like you're volunteering the information and you know berating them with it <laughs> and like you know he literally asked her and then he's like or hacks them and he's like oh well you're just black and it's like okay that's fine but so then why even bring it up and ask like 